Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And in this episode we have to begin with uh, certain notes about changes I've made. First of all, I've updated real fuels and stretchy tanks because um, Nathan Kell pointed out that I could just set the, a little line in the config to start equals 1000 uh, to make sure that I can stretch the stretchy tanks that I've had so much trouble stretching. So since I can stretch the stretchy tanks, I don't need to worry about the ones that are uh, static in the width. Uh, so I was able to update to Real Fuels version 5 and Stretchy Tanks version 9. Uh, I don't know about Real Fuels version 5.1 because that's technically recompiled for 23.5 and we're not in 23.5. So, so yeah, but that means that here I need to unlock these parts because those are the new stretchy tank parts so let me do that first other than that uh, also by uh, popular demand it seems uh, I've added mechjeb to the command pods so mechjeb is now built into those uh, so uh, anything that had a module command thing in its uh, config now has mechjeb so we don't have to slap that on but I'll have to make sure that uh, the parts that I'm using have mechjeb, just, just in case. Um, other things, I've updated the solid fuel boosters. The solid fuel boosters were apparently underpowered for real solar system. They needed uh, 4.2 times more fuel, uh, as pointed out by Nathan Kell. So, uh, th not the, not the um, stretchy SRB boosters. Those, those were fine, but... The other boosters from KW Rocketry and Nova Punch in particular I updated with uh, 4.2 times more fuel so that they were suited for a real solar system. Uh, I did not change the stock ones because I don't actually intend to use the stock ones. So, so just the ones from KW Rocketry and Nova Punch. Lastly, I have changed the remote tech config so the range model type is root rather than additive. I hope this does not break everything, uh, but that means that instead of adding the ranges of the antenna, it now takes a square root function of the two antenna ranges in order to figure out how far they should be uh, before they lose connection. Uh, let's take a look at our satellite network to make sure that it hasn't uh, completely broke everything up, all right? Well, I guess it's sort of hard to see here. Well, here, here's our connection line. So I guess, well, I guess we're going to find out eventually. Uh, I hope this, this, this I mean, because I put all the probes assuming not that the ranges were additive or even root, but that it was just the range of the single satellite. So uh, whatever satellite it was, I only assumed its own range. So I can't imagine that uh, my satellite network should be uh, completely messed up because of that. However, what I'm really worried about is whether remote tech might in introduce some sort of glitch and that uh, because of the glitch... Huh, that's interesting. Oh, uh, I guess if I select one? Yeah. Well, anyway, it looks alright. But uh, So yeah, I'm just worried if uh, remote tech might have introduced some sort of glitch into the thing. And at least in this screen it doesn't look like it has but uh, we'll, we'll find out I'm sure so uh, but we've got other business to attend to let's go back to the tech tree for a sec okay so I've made those four changes but now we need to get on with our mission and I wanted to send a probe to the surface of the moon and I wanted to do so with some mystery goo involved so I've got mystery goo now and so the science junior will take a thousand more science and I want to get that thousand science. Now I don't know if I'm gonna do it in this mission, but uh, we'll see. Ah, that's my aim anyway. I, I For 10 science I'm gonna unlock these airplane parts. You never know when you need a winglet anyway. So let's get those. And the next stage is 500 science, so that'll be a while. Uh, these are things that don't work. So, other than that, I think we're... We don't need heavy lander legs yet. The rest of this is probably in the future. I don't want to mobile mine just yet. Advanced probe tech sounds interesting. 
mostly AIES parts, which are fast. Uh, they they look fabulous, so might want to pick those up. And the other remote guidance units. Okay, I think we can hold off on the rest for now. Let's save up so that we can uh, unlock Science Junior in the future, or maybe also well, those th these parts are 1500 Science, which is way off. Though maybe the next stage in our general rocketry. We can't unlock it yet, but uh, maybe we should be looking at that. All right, so let's try and build a Mooner Lander. Okay, so here we are with the Highland Force City that we launched in the previous episode. Oops, didn't want to do that. And we really don't need any of this now, but let me just check something. Uh, so these these do have the mech jump core, so let me just test this out, make sure it uh, all works right. Let me remove this uh, surplus mech jet part and the main reason I agreed to add the uh, add the mech jet to the pro parts it wasn't actually for the pro parts it was for the command pod and if you've got a command pod uh, won't let me do that anyway uh, if uh, you've got the command pod it's nicer not to have mech jet sticking on the side I really don't care whether I have mech jet on the side of the pro part uh, uh, these these probes are in the fairings anyway but mech jet is still here so we've got this uh, this probe, but how much of this do we really need to return to Kerbin? Probably not anything, right? Because uh, I think the the experiment is only surface readings, and it doesn't have any surface samples. So we don't need to return our uh, Mooner lander back to Kerbin. So that uh, that'll be a huge savings. But we can't really use any of this. Uh, we might want that antenna though. I like that antenna. Okay, well let's just scrap all this and uh, and start from the beginning. So we need the Mooner experiments. That's that box. And I'm also going to reconfigure the. Highland, uh, the Forsetti launcher, because as was pointed out by Nathan Kell, the third stage is actually not optimized properly. Uh, it is excessive. But uh, let, let's uh, see how heavy our lander is before messing with that. So, right, lander. Um, so I want the... that's the battery. Where did my antenna go? Oh, there's the antenna. I want my antenna at the top. So let's say we have that, like, well that definitely looks like it can communicate with uh, Kerbin Slash Earth again. So let's keep that retracted. But we'll need a lot of battery power to run it. And we need solar panels to actually stick away from it, so that's a little bit annoying. While it's open, I don't think we're going to be able to get much sunlight. And let's get these batteries as well, just because you can't have enough battery power. We're not returning it back home, so we don't need to worry about the parachutes. And we don't need to worry about mech jib. What we could use is some experiments and the goo containers. So, but this antenna is sort of like this, so I'm going to extend this service module a little bit bigger. Actually, maybe let's dump this uh, and put the goo containers on the side like that. Well, could be worse. What we're lacking is really space for solar panels. But, what if we put a whole lot of electric charge? Like that. That could be a thing. Just fill that with electric charge. Now, some super bowl, super stretchiness. So let's see what it looks like with the commutron out. Now, of course, the goo experiments won't be worth as much without uh, bringing them back, but it's a start, right? 
so y to that. I'm probably gonna be overly complicated about this. Let's see. Now that I've got all sorts of stretchiness, I'm gonna use it. So, what we can do is have, let's give it a little bit more space here, have our solar panels on that angled portion. Yeah. Though maybe fitting 12 will be better. Well, first we have to actually decide which, I suppose the rocket to use would be the same one that we had before. This, uh, not that one. Oh, that's the one I have to avoid because it's not configured for anything. Alright, uh, something like that. And let's get some lander legs. Ooh, not that many. These are big. These aren't going anywhere. Why does it want to attach to where the solar panels are? Oh well. You know that doesn't look too bad, does it? How does it look with this? Okay. I could see that. Let's let's take it off for now. Uh, let's see all stats. 1.6 tons without any fuel. Let's get the fuel in. Is 2,300 enough to make a landing? That's a good question. Let's see. Now if I go back out here and increase the size of it. 2,800 sounds interesting. Let's extend that. Maybe we can move these uh, legs lower now. No, no, come on. wonder why it's doing that. We need lights. Lots and lots of lights. Lights are not bad because they don't seem to take much electric charge in this. Right. So I'm going to use this light to illuminate our instruments. Nope, nope. Very good. And we also, no, come on. We also need illuminators for the ground. Let's just have two. Oh, those stick out a little bit too much. Let's have them up here, but tilted. That. Okay, I think that's a pretty decent lander. Am I missing anything? Am I forgetting something? Should action group a bunch of stuff, probably. Oh, I, I haven't got any uh, RCS. I haven't got any reaction wheels. I haven't got any way to control this thing. So, um, the inline reaction wheel, that should be fine. Should be more than enough. Let's, oh, it's gonna make a mess now, isn't it? Mm. Oh, no, it works. That's a little piece of luck, and some, well the RCS really should be here. I mean, how much RCS do I really need? Not much. Let's uh, add a token amount of hydrazine. Let's remove this tank, add some hydrazine. 
Hello, Hydrazine. There we go. Let's say 50 units of Hydrazine. Not Erosine, no, I don't want Erosine. Uh, want an electric charge. And I want more solar panels. I think there's plenty of room for solar panels here. There, that looks better. I could put one of the Commutron 16s as well. Uh, or Commutron 32s. I guess this... Is there any point not going with the 32s? Oh, the, elect the, the charge consumption. Yeah, I don't really... If, if we're gonna go there, we're not going to need that. Because everything in the whole system is configured for the Commutron 16's natural... Well, I guess I don't have to angle it like that. Natural range. Okay, uh, action group time, I think. System 1 will be the Commutron. System 2... Hey. Okay, I thought that was already the action group to that. Okay. Um, I don't think I need anything else, really. That's fine. So, how about... Uh, this looks a little bit weak here, so I'm going to add some struts. I mean, it just makes sense to have some struts in there. No, nobody would ba try to balance this lander on this assembly without some struts here. So, like so. And... Pretty robust lander, I think. <laughs> well, I don't think I need it to look quite like that. Let's see what we can do about this shape. Hmm, it's not like me. Come on. Alright, well, sometimes it just doesn't like to cooperate. Alright, so now that we've got the top all nice and sorted out, come way around here. Yeah, as I was saying, this is overpowered. You can see its um, thrust weight ratio is 1.32, which is crazy. So, we either need to stretch it like this, or maybe we need to make it fatter. Maybe we need to go with 3 meter parts for this part. Yeah. I think we need to go 3 meter. Uh, the, the, the top bearing would uh, work better with that anyway. So, we need a 3 meter base fairing. Do we have one? Oh, we're gonna have to go back to using this interstage fairing base. Ah, that's so sad. Yep, looks like it. But with this one, we don't need the decoupler. So, let's dump the decoupler. This one has a decoupler on it. Let's get some 3 meter tanks. Well, now, now we don't have the 3 meter tanks as such. We've got all these stretchy tanks. They've all, uh, That was the problem. That's why I wasn't uh, upgrading. It's because the stretchy tanks replaced everything. So let's just go with this conic tank. Um, not pressurized. We should at least have a pressurized one, shouldn't we? Service module, cryogenic tank. I think the cryogenic tank is the one that's pressurized, right? Okay, that's better. Now, this tank. We need... some liquid fuel and oxidizer for... Oh, yeah, okay. 
Uh, let's say 2.7 and 3.6 should be fine. And as we scale it up, we'll have more than that. But that's the minimum I need. And other than that, I need these. Okay, now we can scale up properly. Maybe around here. So the reason I got uh, messed up in the first place and uh, had such a had a high, such a high thrust weight ratio on the third stage is because I was intending for the third stage to only be a transit stage to the moon, and so I only sized it based on the vacuum thrust to weight, uh, the vacuum delta v. And that means that uh, it had a high thrust weight ratio. Now it does not, and conic side fairings is right. Oh well, that'll have to do. So now we can reduce the burden on this stage. And as well as this stage. Let's tally it up. See, now this is 7,100, so we would need well, we'll need about 2,400 from this stage in order to get into orbit. 2,400 is doable, but this stage needs to burn out a little bit quicker than than it's doing. 2,400 is pretty close margins, unfortunately. Let's boost this up a little. Let's get this a little bit lower. Let's say five minutes on this one. That looks like sort of... You know what? No. This is not going to be enough. The lander will have to not only get into orbit, but also decelerate all the way into a landing. I think the best bet is to just increase the amount on the lander itself. So it can handle all the business around the moon. Getting a bit heavy though. Let's say that much. On the other hand, maybe it's just too heavy for this rocket. Could uh, apply those solid boosters that I've now revamped. Where are they? These guys. But... You know what? Uh, this is going to be our first try. Let's just try it out. We can at least uh, send over the goo experiment results if nothing else works. Let's keep this to two tons as initially configured. Let's say eight and a half minutes worth of burn time. If we can get it there. There we are. This is the Forsetti 2 now. I think it's fair to say that this is a completely different rocket with its third stage looking like this. Let's move these down. Obviously these fairings shouldn't be going off here. Where should they be going off? We seem to be missing one of our... So those, those two. But it only shows one of these. That's annoying. Uh, let's, let's reserve that for some later date here. Okay, well, uh, this is no longer Heinlein. We're, we're a lander now. Uh, oh, heck. Uh, let, let's call this Asimov. 
Uh, uh, no, we've used that. Jeez, what am I thinking? Uh, well, let's go with uh, somebody else who ought to be named very soon. Clark. Okay, so landing on the moon with uh, Clark. Arthur C. Clark. Actually, you know what? No, that's not right. Definitely Jules Verne, right? The Verne for SETI 2. Let's save. And in this episode, I'll just try to uh, try to get into orbit with this, and then we'll handle the lunar transfer and everything in the next episode. It's a new, basically a new launcher now, so I need to make sure the timing is right, and I'm not too sure I've got that down. Um, not even sure that we have enough for the lunar transfer and landing with this. So lots of uncertainty here. Let's uh, let's take it out of the launch pad and see how well it might work. Okay, it's daytime, but that means practically nothing for us. What we need to think about is where the moon is. And I didn't check ahead of time. Uh, so, set us target. Okay, it looks like we're like 90 degrees off of uh, where we need to be. So, let me leave the rocket on launch pad and uh, jump to the tracking station to get us in the right position. Okay, I actually had to revert back to uh, VAB and then go to Uragity in order to get us in the right position, but uh, we should be fine now. And we're going to be hitting 23.5 uh, degrees north, so 66.5 degrees on the nav ball. Uh, SAS is on, throttle is up, and we're a go. So, on our way to the moon again, but a little bit more suspense this time. I've kept the upper stage orange, I, I don't know if I intended to do that, but I guess, well, that's, that's the way it is now. Uh, we'll change that some other time. Textures were not the major thing on my mind at this point. Okay, so we've got the second one. Let's get that there. Alright, let's start getting a lean in towards 66.5. So I'm not going to update the series to 23.5. First of all, I don't know how compatible 23.5 is with, uh, with first of all, the career mode. Because uh, we're not going to get asteroids, no matter what. Even if I upgrade to uh, 23.5, we're not going to get the asteroids. The new parts aren't particularly useful in this case. Uh, and I would be too afraid of things getting broken. So I'm going to do extensive testing with the Realism Overhaul mods with 23.5 though to make sure, I mean, to see what kinds of issues might occur. But it might be a while before I upgrade everything to, to the newest versions of the mods or 23.5. But I'll make incremental adjustments like I did. Uh, so I introduced the four adjustments that I did at the beginning of this episode and stuff like that. So we'll see. But uh, it's not my intention to rush upgrading because 23.5 doesn't offer any features that I think are particularly uh, useful anyway. Uh, not to this series. Obviously they're great, f I mean the, the grapple, the stuff like that, but since we can't get the asteroids in this series uh, unless we start over from the beginning, um, I don't see a point. Okay, I really need to flatten out here a bit more. Alright, first stage is away, second stage is good. We continue. I'm going to activate the Commutron 16 by pressing 1 here. 
Hi. Oh, but I think it's poking out there. One thing I should check where it works in this, uh, in point two three, is the volumetric clouds in the in the city lights, the uh, the visual enhancement mod. I'd like those in here at least. However, it's a it's a big thing because I'm hitting the RAM limit. I, no, I don't have any texture repl uh, any texture reduction in this, so I'm flying without any texture reduction in this series. And that that uh, the new version of that mod might might kill things. I don't know. We'll have to see. I should check that out. So again, uh, just to reminder, I, I can't drop these fairings. I, I desperately want to, but I can't because if I drop all of them, I can drop one or two of them, but if I try and drop all of them, this stage will actually separate. Because uh, uh, they're meant to actually hold things together. They're not just, uh, they're just not uh, aerodynamic parts in this case. And that is a penalty, by the way. These do have mass. So they add mass to the whole situation, and not dropping them means that I have to burn more fuel. So that's the penalty I pay for uh, having the resizable base, which allowed me to put a 3 meter payload on there. So it looks like after changing the range model to root, uh, it hasn't broken remote tech. Uh, we seem to be nice and connected through this launch. I know, don't speak too soon, right? But still, you know, uh, looking okay. Now I have to make sure I uh, save enough time for the third stage to do a pretty substantial burn, 2,400 meters per second, so maybe I shouldn't be flattening out so soon. A little bit of an up tilt here then. Okay, but I don't need the time to apoapsis to increase. That I don't want to see. Okay. All right. Good separation of second stage and third stage is fine. I really need to have it so that the set stages separate and then the engines light. Uh, uh, having them both happen at the same time is not quite right, I think. I think uh, we do not have enough. Just looking at it right now, and if you take a look at subtract from the stage delta V about 3,300, and what you have left is about 2,100, and that will not get us to orbit right now. So, and that means that we'll have to burn some of the lander stage in order to get to the moon, and I don't know what the margins on that will be. Because getting into the uh, lunar orbit and then descending all the way is quite taxing. Uh, we're talking about um, the velocity around the moon that we travel at uh, in orbit around the moon is uh, about 1,600 meters per second. And you have to burn all of that off and try and uh, make a safe landing. I might need to make this stage a little bit smaller and uh, keep the second stage a little bit larger just so that uh, we get uh, more bang at the end of the second stage in terms of thrust to weight ratio as it burns out. Uh, maybe. Wait a minute. I put hydrazine in here. Did I put RCS units? I think I forgot the RCS units, didn't I? Uh, yeah, well, I forgot the RCS units. So we're carrying completely useless hydrazine, thank you. So yes, I just realized that, so... 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what our inclination is. Oh. Looks like we're going to be quite a bit off from the moon, too. wonder how that happens. Uh, I don't know which direction to go for that. Okay, preparing for third stage engine cutoff. Okay, well. I guess we'll cut it off there. Not a particularly good orbit, but whenever trying out a new launcher configuration, getting the launch profile right is a little bit tricky, and obviously I didn't have the right launch profile for this launcher. And, well, I mean, uh, practice is how we solve that sort of thing. Uh, Stage delta V is decreasing. Well, it was decreasing just now. Well, now it's increasing again. What's causing that? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so we are in orbit though, and we are poised to make a lunar transfer. We're in communication, we're alright in that respect. So in the next episode I'll try to make the lunar transfer even though we're short of delta V on this stage and might have a little bit of trouble. And we'll see how far our lander gets. We're gonna have to burn quite a lot of our lander fuel in order to make this happen, make the transfer happen. So that's gonna cut into things, but, but tune in next time to see whether we can land on the moon or not. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.